Hi guys, another video. How to create a quick picture frame mock-up in Affinity Designer. Now this is an Affinity Designer mock-up that can be made on the desktop or the iPad. It's up to you. Very easy, very quick. New document. Set up a blank document. In this case I'll use a standard A4 sheet size. It's um, quite large so you can reduce it or enlarge it as needs be. I should make it larger because this will not be an SVG file, thus won't be enlargeable. Remember if you enlarge pixel files, they tend to hmm, pixelate. It will have pixel layers in it, but that's okay because the finished images will be mostly page size anyway, and probably used on web pages and things like that. So let's continue. This will be quite suitable for that. Pull out a rectangle to fill the background. I use slightly off-white colour. RGB 235 235 235. Now this is all in RGB. Just forget CMYK. This is RGB and it's the first layer. Now we want to place a frame on that. So draw out the guides to create your frame with the guides. I'm doing it this way because it's easier than trying to draw two rectangles and gauge the size between them and, and uh, trying to get them exactly right and measurements. Just as easy to snap your rulers on, drag down some guides, make sure they're all the same width all the way around, and there you go. Now I made these frames 5 millimeters wide using the rectangular mark tool draw out a suitable rectangular section. You can see the stroke width, you can set the stroke width of about 0.3 points. So you can easily see what you're doing. Now that's the inside of the guides. So you've got an outside one you can see highlight there and the inside one there's one as well. But in this case just check the horizontal and vertical guides. They're the sizes on an A4 page. That's what I use there. And that makes a 5mm border, as you can see. It will all become clear in a moment. Now, go to the Stroke Fill command and set the frame colour. OK, so it's a bit lurid, but I want you to be able to see it. You can always change that colour. And you can see how by setting the fill, You've got the outside border selected, there's an inside border just 5mm away from it. That's another rectangle I've dragged out in there by the way. There's two rectangles, the inner rectangle and the outer rectangle. Both the same colour, but we've now got a border around them because they're exactly the right width all the way around. And the fill from the outside one is the lurid pink. If you're not sure about that, just keep at it, you'll get it. Now to place a shadow. In this case I have a light up in the ceiling area that causes a shadow to fall away from the frame to the left and down. And you can see the shadow I've created there. You do this in effects, out of shadow, and set the offsets as shown. The radius is 100 pixels, opacity is 95%, you can adjust that as needs. The offset I've got there is 40.1 which by eyesight is not too bad. It may need a little bit of adjustment later. The angle is 225 degrees and you can see the little blue line there that shows the angle where the light is coming from in this case. Now then, give the frame some perspective. Using the same effects panel, select bevel and emboss the frame and give it some 3D image reality, some depth. You can play around with the shadows a little at this stage if you like. Now you can see the bevel and emboss is ticked on there. Outer shadow is ticked on. Bevel and emboss is ticked on. Opacity is 100%. The radius is 32.9 in this one. It's a fairly narrow border or frame, but it has got a little bit of bevel to it now. So you can see it gives it that 3D look. It's rather than just a flat image. Okay, next one, give the inner edge some shadow. Now you can see the blue line there. I've got that layer selected 
and the border around it shows. Now I've set the stroke to 3.5 points and the grey from the um, swatches panel to the black 35%. So it's not a pure black. You don't want a black inside margin on that. You just want grey. And I'll show you that now in the next slide. That ex the, the stroke is expanded on the inner border to 3.5 and colouring 35. Okay. Now there we go. That's what it looks like. The result so far. We've got an outer border and we've got a grey border around the inside. You can experiment with that. Make it thinner. Make it larger as you like. But any picture frame you look at, if, you, if you're careful with it, will have a slight inside shadow to it. Only very slight. I haven't offset it or done anything else with it. It's just a grey border to separate it at this stage. Now we're nearly there. Let's add our mock-up image. Place your image on a new layer. Just place your image or drag it onto the design so that it's a new layer on top of the layer stack. Now you can see it up there, the top layer, G577, B9 and all of those numbers across there. That's an image from Pixabay and I just dragged it out there and put it on there from the stock images. You can see in the image on the right, you may need to stretch it or shrink it to suit. Now, of course you will, but make sure the, to make sure the center marker is set in the Transform Studio. A couple of spelling mistakes there, but never mind. See the little square in the middle of the rectangle there? That's, that defaults to the top left. If you do that, your image will sometimes disappear when you place it and move it. Put that on and it, you can modify it in place by adjusting the width and height, if you like. And that will um, keep it uniform. Now, we've got to pull that down a little bit so it fits into the image, but that's what I did and that's where it is. Now, let's see how we move it behind the image. Now, we mask the image by dragging the image halfway into the frame layer below it. So the frame below your image, just drag it down and a little to the right. You watch for the blue bar that appears. You want it to be slightly offset to the right, not right underneath the layer. If it is, you'll have to drag it up a little bit because you want it just to the right. You'll see the blue bar ends just to the right under the, under the rectangle icon that's there. When it's halfway, you can let it go and the image will then appear to be offset underneath the rectangle. And you can see it on the right hand side there. You've got the top rectangle layer and just below it slightly offset and that's where your blue line will be offset to. If it's directly in line with the rectangle it'll put it in line all down the bottom and, and it won't work. So you've got to have it halfway. That's quite a tricky little thing to get used to but once or twice and you'll have it. Now you've created your first mock-up in Affinity Designer. Really that's it. You can modify this as you need, of course, and even explore different frame borders. Place some furniture clip from another image, and there you have it. Well, you might want to use another colour for the frame. <laughs> that doesn't really suit the decor. But it's there to demonstrate and to really clarify what you're making. So, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click on the thumbs up for a like and the bell to be reminded when new videos appear. I really appreciate it. And you will probably find this work file up on my website where you can download it.